So here we will demonstrate the basic workflow of the forearm. Uh, our sample at this time is this uh, container or bag of an unknown white powder. Uh, so we will analyze this and then we will use the databases that we have here on, on this system to try and identify it. Uh, one of the advantages of uh, Raman spectroscopy is that we are able to take uh, measurements through uh, clear plastic bags such as this. So we do not need to remove the powder from the actual bag itself. So I'll place this on the stage itself and we can use these magnetic uh, strips just to hold our sample down and then place this into position beneath the, uh, the objective. Similar to the echo, we have X and Y controls here so I can move the sample and then the dial here for focusing. So first we will move the, the stage up to focus on our sample. Here first we have the bag itself and I'll just focus in slightly so we are obtaining a spectrum from the powder inside. For our controls, the main uh, setting that we will choose is again the number of counts. So a higher number of counts will improve our signal to, to noise ratio uh, and auto exposure. And this is where the forearm will determine the optimum scan time or how long we are acquiring a signal for. Click record. So here the, uh, the forum has chosen a scan time of 10 seconds. So we will just wait for, in this case, a minute as we have six 10 second scans to complete. So here we have the result of our unknown sample. Uh, and to quickly explain our graph, so on the uh, x-axis we have our wave numbers and on the y-axis we have our uh, intensity. So essentially what we are looking to do in this case is to try and identify this particular sample. So if I click on the database tab, on this particular system we have a, a number of databases uh, loaded. Uh, a, a number of them are for different cutting agents, which we believe this sample might be. So I will search all of the databases for our particular sample. So click search, and in this case we can see we have a 99.6% match with phenacetin. So the blue spectra at the bottom is our unknown sample, and at the top we have our reference spectra of phenacetin. Um, so here I can click on overlay, and we can quite clearly see that these spectra are almost identical. So we can quite, we can quite conclusive that this particular unknown compound is phenacetin, uh, which is a very common cutting agent used in the manufacture of cocaine in various parts of the world. In this example, uh, we were comparing a series of counterfeit 50 euro banknotes. Uh, specifically, we were analyzing the yellow stars on the, on the front of the banknote themselves and trying to establish whether the banknotes were printed uh, using the same printer. So in these two examples here, we can see that the spectra are very similar. And if we use the localized zoom window, you can see that they are indeed very, very similar. We can also now use the comparison tab and this will give us a variety of different options. For example, we'll start with the first derivative. Here we are examining the, uh, the, the specific gradients of the, the graph themselves and again we can analyze these in a lot more detail but again we can see that they are behaving very similar. And we can also plot the PCA, so the principal component analysis. Um, in short, and in summary, the, the fact that the two ellipses are overlapping each other is a, a statistical indication that these graphs are, are very, very similar, uh, and this is to a confidence limit of uh, three standard deviations. Here we have in green a third example from a different banknote, and we can quite clearly see uh, a very visibly different spectra. Uh, there are the presence of some of the dominant peaks in the other spectra, but visibly we can see that this is quite different, and again we can analyze this uh, statistically as well. So to show the statistical analysis, I will just select two spectra. Again, we can quite visibly see that there is a, a large difference here. And then we will go into the comparison tab and see the results there. Here we can see this time that with our principal component analysis, the two ellipses are apart from each other. Um, and this would indicate that statistically the two spectra are, are different.